Okay, in today's lesson, we're going to focus on kinetic energy and what that is. And we're also going to look at the work kinetic energy theorem and how that relates to the concept of work in physics, which we covered in the previous lesson. So any object that is moving with some kind of velocity has kinetic energy. And the amount of kinetic energy depends on two things. So the kinetic energy varies with the mass of the object, but the kinetic energy also varies with the velocity of the object. So both the object's mass and velocity contribute to its kinetic energy. So the equation for kinetic energy is written like this, where, where the kinetic energy is equal to one half multiplied by the mass of the object multiplied by its velocity squared. Now, as you can see here, the kinetic energy varies more greatly with the velocity than it does with the mass. So if I double the mass, but keep the velocity the same, the kinetic energy doubles. However, if we keep the mass the same for an object and double its velocity, we quadruple its kinetic energy. Velocity of an object affects its kinetic energy more than its change in mass. So we're going to imagine this is a flat surface and we've got an object of a certain mass on this flat surface and something is pushing or pulling this object in this direction with a constant force or a constant net force. Now this constant force doesn't vary with time which means that it doesn't change direction with time and it doesn't grow or shrink in size with time. It stays constant. We know that from Newton's second law that the force or the net external force acting on an object is equal to the object's mass times the acceleration. Now if this force is constant with time, then the acceleration must also be constant. Now we covered in a previous lesson in kinematics, and if you need a refresher in kinematics, I have a playlist in the description or in the card above here. But we looked at kinematics in a previous lesson, and one of the kinematic formulas that we derived or that we used to answer kinematic problems is this equation here, where the final velocity squared of an object undergoing constant acceleration is equal to its initial velocity, what the velocity was before the object was accelerated, squared, plus two times the constant acceleration multiplied by the distance the object has traveled. So we also learned in a previous lesson about the work done by a force on an object during a displacement. And the net work done by a force is equal to the constant force applied to that object multiplied by the distance that object travels due to that force. So in our example above here, we've got a force pushing our object in the horizontal direction and it travels a distance of delta x. And the direction of the force here is in the same direction as the displacement. So it's not at an angle like this, it's in the same direction. So you may have also seen this formula like this, where F, where the network is equal to force multiplied by the distance traveled cosine theta. And if the angle theta is equal to zero, then cosine theta is equal to one. In other words, when the angle is equal to zero, then the angle between the force 
and the displacement is equal to zero. They're parallel to one another. But because we also know that Newton's second law, the force, the net force acting on an object is equal to the object's mass multi multiplied by its acceleration. We can substitute this right hand side into our work formula here. So work, the net work done, is equal to the object's mass times its constant acceleration multiplied by the distance that it's traveled, delta x there. If we have a look at our kinematics formula up here, you'll see that the work formula share the acceleration and distance term in common. This means that we can combine these two equations together, and this will allow us to discover more information about our object. So I'm going to rearrange our kinematics formula to make this term the subject here. So the acceleration multiplied by the distance is equal is equal to the final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared divided by 2. And we can insert this right hand side here into this position here. So the network done by a force on an object is equal to the object's mass multiplied by its final velocity squared minus its initial velocity squared divided by 2. And if we expand out our brackets here, we get something that looks very familiar. We get half mass times final velocity squared minus half mass times initial velocity squared. And that is the net work done by a force on our object here. What we've discovered here is something called the work kinetic energy theorem. And this tells us that the net work done on an object equals the change in its kinetic energy. So we've got a kinetic energy term here, which is the kinetic energy when the object is at its final velocity. And we've got a kinetic energy term here, which gives us the object's kinetic energy at its initial velocity. So let's go back to our block that's being pushed by a constant force towards the right. Let's say that our initial velocity for the block is zero. So u equals zero meters per second. This means that its kinetic energy at this initial state is also equal to zero because half times mass times velocity squared, where u here is equal to zero, is also equal to zero. But after being pushed by a constant force over a distance of delta x, then it's increased its velocity to v, and v could be something like two meters per second. So the net work done on this block as it's being pushed and accelerated up to a higher speed is a positive value. Because from our work kinetic energy theorem, our initial velocity is zero, but our final velocity is a positive two meters per second. So we've only got a positive term here. And this term is equal to zero. So our net work done on our object is positive. Our force has provided kinetic energy to our system. Let's say our block is on a frictionless surface. We've stopped pushing our block. But because our block is on a frictionless surface, it moves forever towards the right at a velocity of two meters per second. And this is our initial velocity now because we're gonna apply another force to try and slow down our block. We're gonna apply this force in this direction 
Now the motion of the block is in this direction and it's going to travel a distance of delta x before it comes to a rest. So the final velocity of the block will be 0 meters per second because our goal here is to stop the block from moving. So what does this mean in terms of the work kinetic energy theorem? What is our net work done on this block as we're slowing it down? Well, the final velocity is zero. So half times the mass times the final velocity of the block, this term is going to equal zero. But the initial kinetic energy minus half times the mass times the initial kinetic energy of the block, this is not going to be zero. This is going to have a negative value because of the negative sign here. So our net work done on this block is going to be less than zero, is going to be a negative value. And this means that we're taking energy away from this system. We're taking kinetic energy away from this system as we're slowing it down. So in summary, when the network is positive, we are adding kinetic energy to an object, causing it to move faster. This means that our final velocity here, this V term, has a higher value than this initial velocity term. Say if the final kinetic energy is 10 joules, but the initial kinetic energy is only 5 joules, then 10 joules minus 5 joules is a positive 5 joules. We've got a positive network done. But if our network is negative, we're removing kinetic energy from an object, making it slow down. So in this case, this final kinetic energy is lower than its initial kinetic energy because initially the object was moving faster than it is now. So for example, if our final kinetic energy is lower at two joules, then our initial kinetic energy, say 12 joules, then we get a negative work value, which means that we've removed kinetic energy from an object in a system. What does it mean if the network done is zero? So what happens? What does our system look like if the network done is equal to zero joules? Well, this will only happen if the kinetic energies from the final state and the initial state haven't changed, which means that the object hasn't changed its velocity. These velocity terms will have the same value, the same velocity. So for example, if an object was moving at 10 meters per second towards the right, and then five seconds later, it was still moving at 10 meters per second towards the right, its velocity hasn't changed. This is the final velocity. This is the initial velocity. If these values are the same, then their kinetic energies haven't changed. And if you minus these kinetic energies together, which are the same, you'll have a value that's zero.